Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is Heathlands at Home and my name is Tony Mason. I'm a community artist, storyteller and a social historian. And this is another in the series of our uh, history chats, history talks if you like. Um, we're going to focus this time on Carlisle principally and images of Carlisle. Um, in this book, in this file, we have a number of, uh, well, they're all black and white photographs. Um, starting, there's a few from the 1930s, 40s, majority from 1950s and 60s up into the early 70s. Basically, all of them within a working and living lifespan. Um, there's only two which are probably Victorian or Edwardian and um, I hope you will enjoy them I hope you will try and have a look at the images um, and see if you can spot what's there now and uh, if anything is still there um, there's some interesting characters we'll meet and some interesting buildings we will meet um, Carlisle is a very very um, exceptionally historical centre um, the Romans arrived obviously and um, they set up um, castles all along Hadrian's Wall and Carlisle was a major major um, fort for them as it um, guarded the uh, western approaches um, from the north and the south um, when the Normans came around about 1150 they started the castle which is probably the oldest building in Carlisle that's still standing um, closely followed by the cathedral followed by the tithe barn and the guild hall or the redness hall uh, as it was also called um, so those four buildings are probably the oldest buildings that Carlisle has still standing. Um, there is West Walls, of course, which is part of the original fortification of the castle. But these four buildings are the earliest in the city of Carlisle. So let's have a, a look through some of the images that I've got here for you. They're all in black and white. Um, they're all taken by persons or persons unknown. Um, and they are very, very interesting. The first one we'll have a little look at is one of the ones which is probably um, Edwardian. And I'll just put that there for you. Um, straighten that up a bit. This is a shot of the old Eden Bridge, which um, was originally built in 1815. Um, and was doubled only in 1932. What you can see here is is a drover bringing the sheep into the centre of Carlisle and this is probably we can guess by this lady's dress sometime probably around about Edwardian era which is after Queen Victoria but before the First World War. You'll notice here that there are buildings here now that's where the Chinese gardens are. Um, the Chinese gardens originally were built and called the Italian gardens but during the Second World War um, when the British was fighting the Italians and the Axis uh, powers it was obviously changed to the Chinese gardens but people had there was a street of houses where the Chinese gardens is uh, now. Um, you'll also if you look very closely there's also a pony and trap coming over the bridge there. So that's an early, one of the few early uh, images we have of the original 1815 bridge over the Eden in Carlisle. The next image I'd like to show to you is, all, is later on and it's probably from the 1930s. And this is uh, two ladies with children and it's probably the 1930s and the reason why we're looking at this is, is because of the, the hats that the ladies are wearing um, and also the vehicles which we can see further down in the street um, and it says looking to Botchergate Carlisle 
So you're looking down into Botchergate uh, through one of the arches, which is obviously near the station. The next one I'm going to show you is moving on into the 40s. And this one, um, I'll just remove that because it's quite a large slide. This one here is Denton Hall and it's Graham Street in particular and it's a VE Day Party, Victory in Europe Day Party um, and these parties were all over Carlisle um, and all over the country where people celebrated, they all came out into the street and had a street party basically. Um, you must understand they'd been at war since 1939 so that's six years. Um, and in this one, what's interesting here is you can see a gentleman here and he's holding up two uh, sticks and he's making the victory V sign, um, which was extremely popular and part of the stay calm and carry on kind of situation which Winston Churchill used. So this is obviously a photograph and this would have been a big, big deal for people, ordinary people to have the photographs taken. Um, and possibly put in the newspaper um, or kept for posterity just like we're doing now really it's all part of Carlisle's social history we have another one here which I'll just put down here um, and this is Harrowby uh, Burnett's Road to be precise and it's their street VE Day party and you can see they've got the flags out the Union Jacks here they're waving They'll have had a big table in the street and everybody will have sat round it. Um, there would have been rationing. Um, so it would have been fairly stayed fair, if you like, but there would have been lots of pay and pop, perhaps. The next one I'd like to show you is all, taught, all a little bit earlier than 1945, but this is... Um, a company of the 2nd Cumberland Battalion of the Home Guard, Dad's Army if you like, um, and they're practicing bayonet drill, which looks to me as though it's a bit staged for the camera to be frank, um, and it's based at Morley Street School. Okay, and this is round about 1943, probably 44, and the reason why I say that is because They've all got guns and they've all got bayonets and a decent uniform. Um, as we'll see in a minute, the uh, the Home Guard and such like really were very poorly equipped um, in the four, 1940, 41, 42. Um, so that's the Home Guard unit. The next one I've got to show you, um, which we'll just put on there like in fact what we'll do is we'll remove that one because it's quite a large one again we'll put that one it's just to give you a clearer image of some of the because some of these photographs are, are quite old and blurry this one is very interesting this is March 1940 now this is the time of well fight them on the beaches and the blitz and all of this which went on in this year um, and it's actually before Dun the evacuation of Dunkirk this is a bombing exercise um, which was held on Greystone Road and the corner of Butcher Gate um, and it was set up by the ARP the Air Raid Precaution Unit and the uh, ferrying casualties into an ambulance what's interesting is is that they've got tin hats on but very little else um, so they were actually practicing for Carlisle being bombed um, Carlisle you must remember was a big railway centre um, and had a lot of marshalling yards and obviously the local ARP obviously wanted to make sure that they could carry out their duties if such things did occur. So we're going to move away from 40s and 30s now and we're going to look at um, some images um, of 
Carlisle, um, which some you might know and some you might not. Um, and it's all based on the, the sort of title of this little section is the entertainment area. Now, this photograph is of Her Majesty's Theatre. Yes, Carlisle did really, really have a theatre, even though you wouldn't know where it is now, or um, it, uh, it probably had a better sound than the Sands does now, let's put it that way. Um, but this is Her Majesty's Theatre, um, and this is in the days before television, and this is for, as we can see, the coronation in June 1953. This was when uh, the Queen was coronated um, and they were going to be showing this in the theatre here um, because obviously people really didn't have televisions. Very few people had televisions in the early 50s. Um, so what was interesting about this building is, whilst it's no longer here, um, the powers that be in their infinite wisdom knocked it down to make it use as a car park and the Iceland food store. Um, that's why if you if you go to the Howard Arms now, they used to have and probably still do a lot of music hall um, imagery in there. And it all came from Her Majesty's Theatre. Laurel and Hardy played here in the early 50s. Um, as well as many, many, many uh, other entertainers of the time. As we move on to the next one, this is a shot of the Lonsdale. Now, the Lonsdale uh, cinema opened in 1931, and this is a photograph taken of it here, in 1953 i have looked to see what these guys were queuing uh, well i'm presuming they're guys but there's ladies here as well what film they were queuing to see but it's i, I can't make it out um it's not displayed um eventually finally the lonsdale the beloved lonsdale um to a lot of us who actually went there uh, closed in 2010 and is now demolished um there is a website uh, with photographs of the Lonsdale and in fact if you go to the fire station um, the entertainment centre that the council run you'll see that they have retained some of the stained glass from the Lonsdale but you can see it's a 1930s deco building um, and it, people tried to save it but unfortunately it didn't happen we removed that one because it's quite a large picture This next one, as you can see in the top left here, is Carlisle 1958. Uh, and this is the Viaduct Hotel, which has recently been taken down. This is the section that they have recently demolished. But this is the other part of the hotel with the Queen's Cafe here, which is where, Tes where Tesco's is now. Um, so the hotel principally a railway hotel, um, was in two sections. Um, and it was demolished recently um, and more could have been made of it perhaps. Another image we have of another hotel. This is the County Hotel um, What's interesting about this is, I've had a look and they are offering dancing. Um, dancing on Tuesday and Saturday nights. Um, and is print, this is still here at the top of Botchigay. Um I think this building now may be Barcel or something close to it. Um, but it's still there. There's, they must have had, and probably still do, a big room for dancing. Um, that was one of the main topics of um, entertainment, uh, was dancing. And finally, in the entertainment section, 
I'll just remove that. Take that away as well. Um, this is a photograph which um, was taken on September the 1st, 1961. And the reason why we know it was taken was because this was the launch of Border TV. Get ready to switch to Border Television. Um, and this is outside the station by the courts. So this is to advertise that the uh, independent television um, studios would be opening up. Um, prior to this time, there was only one uh, company and happens to be BBC. Um, so this was to provide uh, another channel for people to watch on the television, but it would be paid for by adverts. Um, and like the BBC, it was free. Um, you didn't have to pay for it. Um, and before this time, um, it was interesting because now in Carlisle there is a, a phrase which goes about which says the border crack and deek about, um, which obviously didn't exist before 1961 because border television didn't either. Um, so it's a slice of history that uh, it's nearly 60 years old um, and it's interesting to think in all the days of all the ways we communicate and entertain ourselves that um, this was top grade advertising if you like so that's sort of a few shots of entertainment um, and a bit of historical uh, information what we're going to look at now is a large section of um, scenes of Carlisle and we're going to start principally um, in the centre in the city centre um, and there's no particular order. Most of them are from the 50s, 60s, and one or two from the 70s, early 70s. Uh, once again, all in black and white. Um, and it'll be interesting for you to look to see what's changed and what hasn't changed. Um, like a lot of uh, large towns and small cities, Carlisle has changed. Um, we're talking about a time before the lanes was built, for a start off. Um, the shopping experience which came about in the, the late uh, 1980s and was uh, uh, funded by uh, insurance companies. Um, so there have been changes in Carlisle. So let's have a look at the first image on, in this section. This is 1953 Carlisle in the snow. Um, What's interesting about this photograph is, is that you still have the market cross in the centre of your picture. That hasn't moved. That market cross is what one of the oldest structures in Carlisle, around about 1450, um, and is of great historical uh, importance to the city of Carlisle. Looking very closely here, this is Bins on the extreme left hand side and what else do you have you have um well you have the town hall and the clock having looked at this picture very very closely i can tell you it's round about quarter to 11 in the morning <laughs> okay um and this photograph has probably been taken from one of the shops opposite bins out of the top window and you can see here there's buses there's bus stands this is Lord Lonsdale he is now outside of Marks and Spencer's but he keeps moving about over the years um, so this is a snowy scene of Carlisle in 1953 um, the traffic this was all this is all now pedestrianized of course and this was pedestrianized late 1980s 1990 um, i do recall just seeing it being created as a pedestrianized zone and trees are now planted along here um let's see what else we've got of the city center this is the same area but without the snow this is also 1950s um, 
here we have the market crop on the extreme left and ribble buses okay which obviously uh, parked and dropped people off at right in the center of Carlisle. this is interesting this fella here originally i thought he was it was a motorbike but looking very very closely it's a motorbike with a sidecar <laughs> and there's someone in the sidecar um some things haven't changed the crown and mitre is still here look whilst it has a uh, a porch in front of the entrance the cathedral in the distance has a bit of scaffolding on it uh, and johnson's the cleaners is on that corner um so and of course the town hall here but nobody park nobody's able to park here now <laughs> um so that's a scene of carlisle there here we have the scene, same scene from a different angle um, late 50s early 60s perhaps um, and having looked at the town hall clock there I can tell you it's five to five but on what day I cannot uh, determine um, what's interesting is you've still got Johnson's the cleaners here on the corner and it looks as though this may have been taken from upstairs in the crown in my day from the crown in my side um, the bus here is advertising capstan cigarettes doesn't happen anymore um, and what's interesting personally to me is this car here is a Morris Traveller my uncle had one of those and uh, the outside was wood um, marvellous marvellous cars um, collectors items these days uh, but you can still see we've still got a bit of a bus stand here um, and of course the town hall clock you've seen all three sides of it now but what's interesting is there's no clock face on the northern side apparently the the standing joke in the city of Carlisle is it's because we don't want to give the Scots the time of day however so we'll have a, another look at a Carlisle scene here So this one is um, Station Square in the Courts, 1953. Some of these photographs have dates on them, some of them do not. Um, so where there isn't one, we'll take a semi-educated guess looking at clothes, um, looking at um, what's there and what's not there, looking at cars. Um, we can track when cars went out of existence and when they were in production etc etc and other such things um, are all part of looking at social history really um, so what we have here is pretty much the same <laughs> it hasn't changed much um, and when nearly 70 years away we've still got cannons which are the original cannons from the siege um, in the 1745 rebellion bonnie prince charlie and all that um the this is the taxi rank where people wait after a late night out to get home uh, after they've been down the uh, the golden mile that is botchergate or was or still is hopefully um phone boxes i think there's still a phone box there and trees and so it's pretty much as is that one this photograph is dated 1951 uh, and this is the town hall on scotch street okay this believe it or not is where costas is now so you've got costas on the corner um parking you can park your i don't think it's a bentley but the cars were very stately in the 50s as you can see lots of chrome oh i liked a bit of chrome in the 50s um in 1989 i'd been in carl a year when i came over from newcastle from the northeast this tobacconist was still there 
in those days. Um, he was still in business there. Um, things, some things never changed. Back still there. This is there's the town hall. The clocks up here. What are the clocks up there? Um, just interesting to see how things have changed. Sometimes for the better, and sometimes not for the better. And this photograph is Lowther the Street Bus Depot, June 1955. Um, so this is at the back of Lowther Street, if you like. Um, now this is United Buses. It wasn't always Stagecoach. In fact, Stagecoach didn't come into existence until much later. So you had Ribble and you had United. And United went to Newcastle. But look at this. Bus to talk and tarn anyone? Surely that's progress. <laughs> if you can get a bus to talk and tarn. And it's more environmentally friendly than everybody taking their own cars. Uh, in 1951, you could go to talk and tarn on the bus. Which I find fantastic. Um, I think we should campaign to bring it back, personally. Um, so, some photographs initially, you look at them and think, there's nothing there. Why is someone taking a photo? Probably because they were going to demolish it or move it or whatever. But when you look at the actual things in the photograph, so Newcastle, Hexham, Gilsland. I don't think the bus goes to Gilsland. In fact, I know it doesn't. Talk and Talk, Holtbank Gate and Brunton. So, yeah, it's June 1955. This next one is a summer, sort of spring scene. There's no date, no date on this one. Um, but you'll notice that there's no bus stands in the centre. The market cross is here, surrounded by flowers. Okay. And obviously little traffic islands. For pedestrians to hide in when the buses were coming round. Um, Stead and Simpson's shoe shop is along here for people. And once, see, rubble buses, Robinson's bread. I don't think Robinson's the bakers are around anymore. Um, but what we must remember is, is that. The majority of these type of buildings here are now no longer here because that's the lanes. That's one of the entrances to the lanes. Just when you thought, like buttons, you get one, two come along at once. Here's another shot. Now this is same bus depot, 1968. So it's 15 years later than the original than the shot we saw before. What's fantastic for me in this shot is this guy here he's got a fishtail parker on in 1968 in Carla so he's, he's obviously a bit of a mod and quite hip um, yes it does happen in Carlisle so but you'll notice the bus doesn't go to Tom Town anymore um, it goes Newcastle Brompton still go to Gilsland mind you Hexham White Close Gate Lordy, you must have thought White Close Gate was actually outside of Carlisle um, but no talking tarn anymore let's see what else we have in the uh, this is an interesting photograph for many many different reasons um, this is a photograph and it says moving north along Lowther Street now this is dated 1966 and you think if you, if you look at this closely you talk about traffic congestion now um there's the ribble bus sign so this is a coach possibly going to edinburgh let's just say for example these buildings are still here these buildings um this garage I've been reliably informed by uh, one of um, the people at Tully House um, that this was Dias's garage. And all of this, this side would come down um, 
be made way for the lanes. So you've, all of this is pretty similar, but on this side, we now have the lanes complex. Yeah. In fact, in an in a interesting note, um, they recently have decided that they're going to demolish some of the older buildings on the left-hand side going down Botchergate. Um, and one of these you can still just see is um, a music shop for Dias. Obviously a, a, a Carlisle family. This is the city centre of Scott Street in 1963. And the, what is the first thing that strikes you when you look at this is... ho oh, oh, ho the Civic Centre! So the Civic Centre was up and running in 1963. A lot of people, well, a lot of people like it and a lot of people don't like it. Um, it's now a classic 60s building, really. Um, and so possibly it's protected as much as anything else. Um, town hall clock here, of course. It's not quite three o'clock in the afternoon. All the buildings on the right hand side here are now gone. This is the lanes. Okay, this is where your entrance to the lanes is and other such things. Um, on your extreme left is the Market Cross. And what you notice is there's no flowers. We've taken all the flowers away now. But you've still got the traffic coming round and traffic going down or coming up. Could have been a one-way system. Maybe I should check into that. This sign here just says Hatter and Hosier. Yes, Carlisle has quite a long tradition in um, making clothes and uh, such like. And there was a hatter on the main street. You can get your hats made. Everybody wore hats. Not so much possibly in 1963, but in 50s, 40s, 30s, everybody wore a hat. Or at least owned one. Um, so, moving just slightly away from the city centre. This is a tester. This is a tester. So, any idea where this is? What I can tell you is, there's very little traffic. In fact, all you've got is a couple of trucks in the distance. Got it yet or not? The cottages on the right-hand side might give it away, as is the toll house here. This is Kingstown, before the M6. Because this signpost here, these signposts here, actually tell you to go on the A74. So this is the entrance to Carlisle North. And right at the top of Scotland Road. There's no date for this. Um, so, but obviously we know that there's no M6. The M6 didn't come up to Carlisle till the 70s, early 70s, roundabout. So we know that it, it's 50s, mid 50s, early 60s. Um, it was the entrance to Carlisle from the north and the northeast to some extent. Um, there was a story when I first came to Carlisle in the late 80s that a lady who lived on Scotland Road, fancifully, I thought at the time, told me. She said, oh, the kids used to play football in the street on Scotland Road. You wouldn't believe it now. Well, this picture actually proves that you probably could. Um, so an interesting photograph, that one. And we have another interesting photograph as well. Right, no prizes for getting what's right in the centre of this image. Uh, and if you don't know, then really, you're probably not a local. Um, so obviously it's Dixon's Chimney, 
where where are we here where what's going on um these houses on the right hand side are no longer there um that's where the bobbin mill is yeah and these houses on the left hand side is where iceland couldn't be now the supermarket which is there this is no date for this one early 60s perhaps mid 60s perhaps um i mean right at the top here you're looking towards the top the dolson road um this area now is heavily trafficked basically um and uh, you're standing on the corner probably opposite sainsbury's where it is now looking this one brings a lot of amusement particularly amongst builders and trades folk and men really What's fantastic about this photograph? This is 1967. Um, it's not so much the date or anything, but the taking up the tram lines at St. Nicholas. So there were trams in Carlisle, but obviously they were taking them up in the mid 60s. What's fantastic about this photograph? There's no health and safety apart from a pair of goggles here. There's no PPE, there's nothing. There's not even any barriers to say that they're actually working. They would have closed the roads today to do that. But no, 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 1967, we'll just get a couple of, a couple of old army jeeps with some uh, torches and acetylene. Uh, you can stand in your cardigan, because you're obviously the gaffer, the foreman, and you can use your hands with no gloves to pick all the rubble out while he cuts it. I mean, it's just fantastic. It's just dynamite as far as I'm concerned. I mean, just looking at how things were done. And what, 40 years ago? 45, 45. Just brilliant. So sometimes the next time you moan about having to wear PPE or something, think about these guys. Um, totally different time scale. Totally different time scale. But certainly getting into some of my favorites of this archive and this is one of them as was the previous one this is a fantastic photograph not necessarily because it's been taken with any sort of uh, skill or anything i mean uh, whoever's taken it it's got the chimney just off center and the two rows of the houses going down but where are we there is a clue um, this white building here is the Millbourne Arms and the building just here is the church next to it so what we've got here is got no date for this mind there's no date on this what we've got here is a couple of globe taxis parked outside we've got I would suspect a young couple because they're holding hands. A couple of people, well, he's working on his car, and because of the time with the flared trousers and the long hair, it could be his daughter, his wife, his son, who knows. On this side now, you have little and all the buildings that go along with it. On this side, you have, well, you've got a bit of a car park, you've got a bit of a green space, and you've got some flats on the corner. As I say, I don't have a date for, for this one. Um, but these were condemned and taken down probably in the mid to late 60s, early 70s. That's the only thing I can possibly gauge on. The next one's a, another babe, shall we say? 
and it gives it away because it says in the corner always prominent in the city is Dixon's chimney and that's before it was capped by six foot on Dalston Road in 1966 so this is the year that England won at the moment their only World Cup football that is um, so what have we got here why was it taken? Well, obviously to capture Dixon's chimney, but it's what sometimes you catch in a photograph which you weren't intending to get that you actually is more getting that is more important. This is a signal box. This is Dalston Road, it says. Dalston Road signal box. Hang on, trains? Yeah, because here, looking down in the corner, we've got some railway gates over the road. The News and Star building is behind us on our right hand side. Okay. And we're looking down towards Shadengate. Yeah. Okay. The Bobbin Mill on the right, remember? And Iceland on the left, further down. So, you would have to stop your car. Oh, uh, pedestrians couldn't go down there when there was a train going through. There is a, uh, an old railway line which runs back of the Colview behind Melbourne Street and runs that way. And in fact, if you go into Tully House, there is a wooden board which says Denton Home Junction. So that area is a lot different now. This area is pretty much the same except for one major feature um, and it was the reason why this photograph was taken this is Wigton Road looking down into Shadengate and this was taken on well it wasn't taken on the 31st of July 1974 it was taken possibly one or two days before because this bridge was due for demolition this was the railway bridge which went from Carlisle station um, and was part of the Waverley line actually so how do we know the 31st of July 1974 well because this sign attached to the lamppost tells us that the road going to be closed for the demolition and we're not far away because in the distance we can see the castle but faintly if you look there's a crane there and it's on top of the bridge so they've already taken up the railway tracks or, or in the process of doing so so if you look now these houses are still here but there's no bridge interesting photograph and obviously someone in the past has taken the time to actually go and photograph things before they were being demolished or as things were changing as a uh, historical record which is great because if they didn't do that we wouldn't have these images now um, and it's a foresight for them to actually do that um, so never feel that you're actually wasting your time taking images of things just because people aren't posing in them um, and what's interesting about these photographs is it's not that these were taken on a digital camera and if you like it great and if you didn't you can wipe it these have to be printed in a dark room and it cost money <laughs> it actually costs more money now to print black and white photographs than it does color whereas in these days it was more it cost more to uh, have color photographs done than black and white This is another interesting where are we now photograph. Um, this is the long disused Irish Gate Tavern. And that should give you a clue. You've got the Civic Centre in the distance. There's no... Um, we haven't got a date for this one. Um, I, I can tell you what some of the cars are. That's a Ford console. That's a Ford Cortina. Um, so we are somewhere in the 60s and early 70s with these. Um, these were knocked down for Cars Biscuits extension. 
if you go further up here you'll have the jovial sailor and a few houses then you've got basically what now is a brick wall which comes along here and here's cars biscuits now then here's another very 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 interesting photograph which needs some time to have a look at well, i'll put it down This is Hardwick Circus in 1963. Okay. So this is Hardwick Circus. That's the Crichton Memorial, which is still there in the center of the underground pass. Yeah. What's fascinating about this, this must have been taken from the top of the newly built Civic Center in 1963 to get that image. Um it's the it's the tallest building there in that vicinity and what we've got here is Eden Bridge you can just see the Eden there in Bits Park there's the cricket ground so traffic traffic this is where they made Hardwick Circus now it's distinctly possible that Hardwick Circus was put together around about the time that the motorway came to Carlisle. Um, that's the M6 motorway was finally finished up to the Scottish border. Um, here are and what was for every winter was where travelers would convene and over winter this is the sand center car park and these trucks and wagons are travelers and that's where travelers stayed over the winter it was a traveler's winter ha winter camp This photograph, I personally, I, I didn't get to see anything of um, the lanes. There's still little bits of it left if you know where to look. Um, this was, this is an image of Globe Lane in 1966. So that's, they were called the lane because that's what they were, they were lanes. Um, I mean, if you look at the side, the width there, um, they weren't suitable for any kind of traffic really or any kind of deliveries they were medieval planned lanes um, this is from 1966 the lanes were finally pulled down late 80s to make way for um, the lanes shopping experience um, the library also moved into the uh, lanes at this time, um, which had been housed for many years, many, many years in Tully House. So the library moved um, in the late 80s into uh, upstairs of the lanes, if you like. Um, and the company, I used to work for the company that actually funded um, as an investment opportunity um, uh, the lanes, a general accident actor who uh, put the monies and together um, obviously with you know, town planners and Uncle Tom Cobley and all. Coming to the last of our sort of street scenes if you like um, this one is just another traffic scene really um, we don't have a date for this this building here is Woolworths, which is now B&M Bargains. So this was possibly taken from where there's a bank on the corner now. It could be the Clydesdale, I could, not West, I think. Um, it's obviously taken from upstairs there. Um, and you're, you're looking down towards um, the station area and one of the gates where the two ladies and the two sons um, the two children were shown in the 30s. Um, 
Originally, I thought this was Lloyd's Bank. It's where, whatever it is, it's where Santander is now. I think it might have been Martin's Bank, actually. Martin's Bank were taken over by Lloyd's sometime in the early 80s, late 70s. Um, because Lloyd's Bank, as far as I'm aware, was has always been where it is now. I could be incorrect on that. Um, but it's looking towards the courts, if you think about it. Um, most of these buildings are still here. Um, we've got the sort of mock Tudor kind of building here. Um, traffic's in gridlock. It's all the way down. Um, and I'm sure if we looked at some of the, the cars and got some dates, we could... But it's it's definitely, I would say, late 50s and mid 60s at some degree. And finally, let's have a little look at some of the uh, things from Her Majesty's Theatre that we talked about and uh, we showed the photograph earlier. Um, there's an image of a typical programme um, of Her Majesty's Theatre, Carlisle. This is 1956. And inside we'll find um, that there are reasonable adverts. Got one here for Get Younger Every Day with William Younger's Beer. Um, what's interesting here is that next week um, in Her Majesty's Theatre they are doing the sensations of 1956 and what we have is we have Grossini the world's greatest escapologist we have Tom Jacobson the armless wonder uh, then we've got Hercules the world's strongest man obviously uh, Lad West the world's wonder contortionist this is all entertainment in 1956. Top quality entertainment in Carlisle. Little Beaver, the world's greatest sharpshooter. Health and safety. Hello. Uh, and then we have a personal appearance for the first time on any stage of Carlisle United's popular players. We have Ivor Broadus, into England international, versus Paddy Waters, an Irish international, performing the thrilling game of heading tennis as performed on television, ladies and gentlemen. So, and it says, book early for this outstanding show. <laughs> Some things stay the same. You can meet your family at Pioneer Meat Stores in Fisher Street. Still there. Then you've got the Cumberland Building Society. Neither a borrower or a lender be until you have consulted your local billing society. Still going strong. TSB, I'm unfortunately not. Um, they actually went uh, in a merger with Lloyds Bank, I believe. So here's some of the other a, painters and decorators in Denton Street. There's a uh, China and Glass at Stevenson's in the Market Arcade in Stot Scott Street. Um, K's, ladies, gents and children's outfitters and general household drapers. You'll find them in Denton Street. What we glean from things like this is not just that the Majesty's Theatre was up and running in 1956, but the people who advertised to pay for the programmes, we find out exactly what was going on. Oh, for example, here we are. Uh, Her Majesty's Theatre, 1955. The pantomime was Cinderella. And I'm reliably informed that Fraser Neal's eighth Carlisle pantomime, he was quite a, 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 a force in uh, the uh, local dramatic society in Carlisle. Another one we have here, which I find absolutely fascinating and wouldn't be allowed today, I can assure you. Um, it's a Majesty's Theatre, uh, uh, the old woman who lived in a shoe. And um, what we have here is uh, Fraser Neal's uh, most elaborate pantomime to be staged. You'll see the Enchanted Lake, uh, the home in the shoe, uh, the village stores, the lands of hills and heather, etc, 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 the Prince's Palace and the Walking Chimp and many other surprises. Um, 
Many people in Carlisle probably haven't seen a chip walking in 1956. I don't know. Um, but it's just interesting to see how tastes of entertainment and political correctness have changed. Although some people say that today's television, you could put a walking chimp on and perhaps that would be as good as anything else that's shown. So if you were going to go to the theatre, what? How would you like to be seen to be dressed? This is absolutely, in my opinion, one of the stars of this conversation. This is from the Woman's Magazine, March the 24th, 1956. Came out every week on a Thursday and cost four and a half old pennies, which is probably about buttons in today's money. This is for Pond's Lipstick. There we are, look. And obviously, so the title is Dreamy Pink Can Lead to Mink. Hang on a minute. This fella's posh. He's got a cane and a, and a top hat. and Oh, he's got a butler and a big Rolls Royce. So, uh, so basically, girls, what they're saying here is, if you use Dreamy Pink Pond's lipsticks, you're going to get a mink coat, a rich fella, a butler, and I don't think you'll be able to get away with this type of advertising nowadays. But in 1956, this was how it was pitched. If you wanted to go out to Her Majesty's Theatre in Carlisle. Um, there's many other examples, but this one, being a colour one, was a big, big spread. Um, we can turn it over and I can show you another one. So here's one, it says... Comb permanent waves into your hair. Now, I'm sure that says wind, not wind. But it says comb, wind and rinse. And so basically, this was the basic fare for the little woman who stayed at home. Which, thankfully, doesn't necessarily exist as much as what perhaps other people might think it does. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, looking through some of the images uh, of the uh, Carlisle um, city and surrounding areas and uh, we'll catch up with you again next time.